All right, Practice Indie Fam Jam, welcome to the Practice Indie Podcast. I am joined by one of my favorite humans on the planet, Becca Jacobson, who um, I want to give a little background, personal background, and then I want her to talk about who she is. But Becca is the reason Practice Indie exists. She did our uh, logo when we were humble, meager beginnings. We um, kind of the first the first time I ever thought like, wow, this might actually be a thing was your birthday party. We had, what was that? Your 25th birthday? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That sounds about right. We had a mermaid themed yoga party for your 25th birthday in the old (laughs) space. Mm -hmm. And um, Becca is just, I mean, I, I can't, I don't have enough time to talk about how brilliant you are. Um, but from your design to your eye, I think something I've really loved about just getting to know you as a person over the years is watching your style evolve. You're highly creative, but it's, um, it's like, it's like evolved in such a fantastic way. Like there's whimsy, but the way you've used light in your photography over the years has changed to this like Mm -hmm. very poignant, I don't know. It's just been really a lesson in me of knowing you and being friends with you of like what creativity can mean, what evolution can mean in a person. Um, And I I just think like you could literally do anything. You're so talented. And I thank you because we wouldn't exist without you. So uh, so that's, that's Becca to me. There's actually a mermaid photo in the, um, women or the shower room here that you got us as an opening gift when we moved into this space. You and I have shared, uh, a deep love of Disney together, a deep love of mermaids. And one of the things that, um, I think initially connected us was dance. Mm-hmm. And so you and I are both, well, you are a current dancer. I am like a closeted dancer. <laughs> Um, but you and I connected over dance and this week we're talking about Lucia. Lucia is actually an, like a performed, like stated dance, an Indian dance that is, uh, typically done by a female that merges the masculine and feminine energy. So the last two weeks we've been talking about Shiva and Shakti, and this week is really the dance of bringing the two together. So I thought you'd be a perfect guest. Um, to talk about how we can bring that into life. And last thing I'll share before I wanna hear just who you are and your connection to this content is um, I normally am against teaching anything I don't know. And Lassia is not something I know. I mean, I know I can, you know, I know the term means bringing masculine and feminine, but we're not gonna learn the dance, at least in my classes. And I've never seen it performed. Um, so I want to be forthright that like, this is a thing that people actually do. And I know nothing about that, but I think the the topic is really interesting. So I just want to call that out that I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, capitalize on something I don't know about. So, so with that, who are you? Tell us about your, yourself and your relationship to dance. Um, thank you for having me. I feel kind of like a celebrity pseudo celeb being on this podcast just um as a listener i'm like whoa this is surreal um but i yeah i live in indy i've been here since gosh 2012 so it's definitely my home and um my background i have a degree in journalism and um in my past life was a graphic designer turned into photographer and um yeah, I've been teaching yoga since 2017, thanks to Shannon and Practice Indie. So actually, um, yeah, Practice Indie and you were like a huge um, catalyst for me kind of moving into, I would say more of like my dharma, more on more onto my path, kind of all happening at this, um, not at the same time, but you were definitely like, um, yoga was like the space that kind of inspired me to tap back into the dancer side of myself because the movement is a little bit um more the classes are creative i mean it's choreography in a different way but i definitely was like ooh, this reminds me of something that kind of is like a long lost forgotten part of myself 
Um, and yeah, I danced my whole life. Like my mom put me in class when I was three years old because I was like running circles around the living room and she's like, what do I do with this? Let's organize it, um, put it into some structure. And um, yeah, there were definitely moments. I think when you're younger, it's like very much, you can't see the big picture of like what this could mean to you. You're just seeing it as like, well, I'm good at it and I enjoy it. It's very like fundamental, just kind of like physical thing. Um, but luckily she didn't let me quit. And I kept dancing through high school, college. Um, I was on the dance team and then I was a dance minor. And then I, I stopped dancing after college. You know, I went into the workforce and there wasn't like, I didn't make space for dance. It didn't really make sense for my adult life. And all of that kind of like programming started to come in to place of like, well, this is me as an adult. And I think dance was not part of that narrative or I didn't let it be part of that narrative. So um, yeah, but I definitely like, you know, yoga was a part of me kind of working back into um, that side of myself. Yeah. I love it. Uh, you and I both, um, well, we both have dance backgrounds. I went to school conservatory for dance and musical mm -hmm. theater and, um, and something that was always, I guess, it's part of what we need to really deconstruct about, I, I think, aside from like Misty Copeland, I think um, we need to really deconstruct about white culture is that I grew up in the paradigm that like ballet, the ballet was the ultimate and then everything else trickles down from there. And probably every person that danced and is listening to this learned that ballet was the foundation and that you went, you know, you moved out from there. And while I think there are nuggets of truth to that, um, I also, I feel, I don't dance anymore. I, I won't even like, sometimes I'll come to the studio and I'll dance and nobody's watching. Um, but I have struggled forever. Even when I switched to being a jazz uh, focus in college, I've struggled forever to let go. And so one of the things that I really um, admire about you and like want to like borrow essence from is that this ability to abandon structure in a way. Um, Cause I, I think that is the paradigm I've grown up with is that ballet is the ultimate ballet is so structured. You know, there's nothing, there's no foot out of place. There's no hair out of place. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know that I would now identify dance any longer like that. I think that is like, very form based. And I'm not sure if I really look at what is dance? What is, if we're talking about Lucia, this grace and beauty and invitation to merge masculine and feminine, I think I would like to unlearn that. And like, mm -hmm. you know, when I dance, when we have dance parties with my kids, we do that all the time. There's just mm -hmm. freedom. And so could you talk a little bit about maybe how you have come to um, dance church and teaching mindful movement and sort of what does that freedom look like? How did you arrive at that? How does that feel? All those things. Yeah. Uh, I think something really interesting happened and I, I don't know what kind of like inspired me to start taking class again, but I just know that it started happening. Like it, I was like, Ooh, I want to take classes again as an adult. Like, um, before I got hit in the face with this huge life change. And I think um, it was just, you know, call it whatever you want, but it was like a support system coming into place that, that was there for me. Like as I went through a divorce, I um, was already taking class regularly and continued to take class regularly. And I mean, what we were doing in class was like very, you know, like, textbook modern class the like warm up and then you go into some technique and across the floor and then a combo and it's like nothing like life changing about that but it was it was for me and it allowed to tap back into something that was like um not about my partnership and um there was no expectation around it it was just like show up move your body connect in your body and that was it like whatever happened in that hour um, I can't even explain it, but it was just like, it started me down this like healing path that like, as this change became more real in my life, I was like, oh shit, like this is actually real in my body. And how am I going to, um, move through this change in a way that's not going to break me or like 
um, yeah, if that makes sense. Like I needed a, a dance was that vessel that kind of carried me through this big life change. Um, and not, not all negative, right? Like it's, it's just the reality of like the spectrum of emotions that um, you're faced with when your life kind of takes a, a pivot turn, if you will. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it just became more spiritual for me than, uh, than it ever had been because this was a very heavy, um, necessary thing that I needed to, um, that I needed to do and move through and dance was really like my best, um, mode of therapy. I mean, I, I saw a, a traditional talk therapist and that was healing in a different way, but I still think like that j there are so many different types of therapies and I think finding the right, like method of therapy is super important because it's not a one size fits all. And um, yeah, I mean, we know that that emotions live in the body and that they're not, it's not a separate, it's the mind body connection, which yoga teaches and supports as well. So um, yeah, it just became like, it came into my life at a time where I was like, yeah, this is fun. And then it became like a very urgent, like, oh my God, I need this. Um, and then that's when dance church came into my life. Strangely enough, again, this feels very like divine timing, but they were um, the group that teaches dance church or that um, created dance church was they have a company and um, Kate who created dance church 10 years ago, she's a choreographer that lives in Seattle and dance church kind of became this class for all people that she created just for her dancers actually so that it was like her warm up class for her studio rehearsals with her dancers and it was like a class that she couldn't find anywhere else and it was just a space for them to just like move and warm up and dance to the music they wanted to um but then it became a way to kind of like remove herself from the like capitalist capital d dance world that like you have um, you have the money and then you have the establishment and then you have the um, curator and then you have the, the dance company and it's like very like exists in this um, hierarchy and dance church found a way to like let the dance company support itself if that makes sense so it became like this like self-sustaining model versus like let's go out and find the money let's go out and find the funding um, by giving dance to the people. So it was a, also a way for um, dancers to make like real connections with the community in a way that's not just like performative and um, going into a theater space and watching performance. It's very much like, no, we're, do, we're dancing together. And, um, oh, I know this dancer, I'm gonna go support her show and watch. And it's just, it created like genuine relationships through the love of dance, so. Um, yeah, and I can speak a little bit more to like what dance churches were maybe a little bit later, but yeah, that's kind of when it came into my life, I was like, it just hit me like a bomb. And I was like, I need to, I felt very called like in the moment, like a real time, like I need to create this here. I want to offer this space for other people because at that point I was kind of already well into my journey of like well this is the road i'm taking i'm going down this road and like i'd already committed to it so i knew that there's i mean there's other people out there like me and there they might be different problems but we're all facing something that we need to we need a space to you know deal with it in so yeah i think something that you said that was so critical that just really hit me is that it was a catalyst it was at a time of great change in your life and a catalyst for for positive change to so like mm -hmm. cultivate the momentum and as we record this we're still talking about shakti this week and mm -hmm. shakti is that dynamic power in the universe that is constantly there you know like we're constantly changing and we're constantly dying and being reborn, you know, if, mm -hmm. if we allow it. And I think that, I think that's one of the things that has always drawn me to you and, and just impressed me about you is that you allow yourself to go through the evolutions instead of like pushing against it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think there, I think there's time for resistance. I think there's function and resistance, but I also think there's there's a lot to say about taking the circumstances where you know you are being called to change and you are being called, either you can push against this or you can move with it. 
Mm -hmm. And it's like the, the wicked song dancing through life keeps going through my head. Um, but you know, you can choose to like have rigor or you can choose to dance with it. And I think this, uh, definition admittedly from Wikipedia about Lassia really embodies that it says the term, uh, in the context of Hindu mythology describes the dance performed by the goddess Parvati as it expresses happiness and is filled with grace and beauty. She is believed to have danced the Lassia in response to the male energy of cosmic dance. So to what, to what you were sharing, like, you know, you, you found this at a time where you were kind of in a, in a breakdown or a death of something, a death of a relationship that then manifested into new change and new growth. And again, I think we're always in that dance. It's whether we choose to, you know, hitch a ride with it or like push against it. So um, yeah, I think that's super powerful. And I think it is this, like, I think it is this also acceptance of, you know, I remember in that time, not the same exact time, but sort of the whirlwind of events in your life, you had a job change, you had a relationship change, you had, everybody goes through these things. Mm -hmm. It's whether we choose to accept them with grace. Mm -hmm. And I also think I'm reading the, um, the book, uh, oh my God. Anyway, it's about Shakti energy. It's about, um, embracing the goddess and the like forms of the goddess. And one of the things that the book talks a lot about is that grace, you know, Kali is a goddess who's like dripping with blood. And often we see her as this like rage and wrath filled woman, but she's actually quite graceful. Like what she mm -hmm. stands for is, is nonviolence, even though she looks violent. So I don't think grace always has to look like ballet. I think grace can yeah. look like ferocity too, you know? Um, so I, I, maybe like, how do you think someone could add dance or dance elements either into their practice or into their life? And how can they use it to balance, either balance these energies or embrace change? Yeah, I, I think that the, the programming is like completely genius because of what you've already mentioned, Laura. It's like dance is this play with gender expression and like, you know, piggybacking off of your conversation last week with Everly. It's like, it's, that is the beauty and the, like the possibility that like theater, dance, um, film, fashion, like all these different art forms create space for play within gender without rules. I mean, there's just like, we're born into a world that has rules. I mean, even before we're born, people in our lives, like people that we end up, you know, loving and caring deeply for are projecting these gender roles onto us. And that's not even fair um, that you're like, you know, you're born into this world with a pre-described um, way of being. But, um, and I think I, I will like acknowledge that even in dance, like like you said, ballet is a huge example of this um, ballroom and like musical theater. And you look at like films from like early Hollywood, like everything was very like um, gender traditional roles. And, and I think like, as we move into like the later 1900s, you, mainstream media is a thing. And we start to see like, like in a lot of other areas, like the expression of gender through dance because dance was always a, I mean dance is a safe space if it's set with that intention and it absolutely like has that that power like just by nature of like what it is like it can be used in so many different ways but like I mean now you're seeing like you're seeing you see everything like I know you love that dancer who um he's like a heel dancer so fierce love his youtube channel I'll but it's like that. yes that's definitely a resource and just like not even specifically um kind of speaking to the the non-binary it's just like their gender neutrality like you can play with these things and you can be whoever you want to be and music allows you to do that because you i think like you take on um, not only like the gender qualities of music but like the cultural qualities of music and i think like one thing that dance church is um, going through right now, like speaking as an employee of them is like the appropriation of different dance styles and different music styles that we use in our classes and like giving credit to that because it's like, 
um, just like music, it's like all of these styles can be attributed maybe, maybe with the exception of ballet, like, but back to like black culture and we've turned them into like white culture and it's okay to like be influenced by those things and be inspired by them. But it's, um, it's also like, you need to give credit where credit's due and like know your history with these things and like, where did they come from? And, um, the dance industry, like specifically benefits white culture and was set up to do so. So it's, it's not different. It's like, it hasn't escaped these things that everyone else is facing right now, but it's, um, yeah, it's just like the difference between like capital D dance and then like dance for the people, dance is a verb. Um, because I think, and so speaking to um, like, how do people access this for themselves? Um, there are, yeah, there's so many ways. There's like, I would encourage people to just like start with themselves in their homes as a way to just like, if, if they're already practicing something like yoga, that's like connecting you with your body. You have a really good foundation for this because you have like this idea of like, you're already in your body somewhat. Some people are so disconnected from their bodies that like this won't speak to them and they have, maybe you do start with yoga, something that kind of is a little bit more guided um, can be helpful just to kind of be like, oh, this is my right arm. This is my left foot. Um, but I mean, you don't even, it doesn't even need to be that technical. Like dance is a feeling that comes from with, comes from within and is is like an external experience like put on a song and just like dance around your kitchen dance around your living room like and that is so transformative and like cathartic to just do that and um it just, it's just like completely personal at that point but if you feel um and like another thing as I was going through this like major life change was um if you're like if you're seeking more of that community feel or like you need people and which is like there's a whole other, we haven't really talked on that, but like the communal factor of dance is so important. Um, but like dance clubs, go early to a dance club. Obviously not right now, don't go. <laughs> don't go until like 20, yeah, Zoom on 21, early to one. 22, but like put it in your planner for next year. Um, not safe, not recommending, but um, yeah, it's just like, it adds an element of like, people and fun and um but you have to go early and you have to go early because it's like safer and it's just less crowded so you can actually dance versus just like you know like <laughs> shoulder shrugs and, um but it's so hard right now I mean we're in COVID and like it's it's scary because we don't know the future of like dance and and like I mean more generally the arts but like we have so many lo um, local dance performance groups and then I like dance church lives under the um, Indianapolis Movement Arts Collective and they're a group that just offers dance classes for anybody I mean it's different styles so you can take Bollywood you can take modern and there are there's like different levels like beginner tap jazz ballet um but it's really like a safe space for people who just like want a little bit more structure maybe I mean dance church definitely isn't like a technical class by any means but it lives under that umbrella of like hey dance is for the people let's just take class and it's not a big deal type of thing that indie and dance works indie i want to mention too because they're also doing that and like indie isn't obviously like we're not as progressed as like the coastal cities they already have these spaces in play and they're very normal there but here it's like it's weird we're just a weird city like we're just we're figuring it out but it's um and I think the people are here and especially now it's like people are moving out of New York people are moving out of LA because it's like the density is no longer a benefit and that's just the reality of like where we are um but there's so many performance groups too like locally that are you know not just like there's indie ballet dance kaleidoscope flourish dance is a modern company really small um Kenyatta and Ibada are both like uh they're, those are all kind of like the closer downtown groups and they all have a different flavor of dance but it's scary for them right now and I don't perform with any of those groups so it's like I feel like I've always kind of been on the outskirts of dance kind of like what you were speaking to it's like I was just far enough outside that I didn't have to succumb to all the pressures of like potentially going into it as my main career where I like I was never going to be a professional ballerina. I was like never trying to be, I don't have the body and like didn't want to, 
I mean, it's intense. It's intense out there. So, um, yeah, I kind of have the luxury of not having to go through that, like, so that trauma, I would call it, like, of what it's like to pursue dance as a career. It's, like, very brutal. Um, and that's a sad reality. But, um, yeah, lots of reasons why that's true for ballet, especially. But, yeah, just the, but going back to, like, these local groups, like, supporting local if you can, and because we have like really quality uh, dance here. And I think even myself, I didn't even realize that until a few years ago. So um, investing in these groups is important so that they can continue, continue to be around. And right now it's just like, we can't, but um, you know, when we can, and maybe that looks different right now, but um, also Ryan Huffington, is like Thea's choreographer and he has been doing he's in LA he's been doing all of his stuff online it's called sweat Fest, and it's very unstructured like he's kind of telling you what to do but that is like if you're like I want to dance at home but I need a little bit of like guidance and just pure joy his classes are amazing um they're so fun they're I would say they're similar to dance church um but he's just like pure light pure joy he's just like ethereal being that just makes you happy when you're just watching him dance and seeing like how much joy he has um, and he, he does those all online and then dance church is also online right now um, twice a week since obviously class is not happening in person for a while so and is the dance church if if people want to attend dance church right now is it the are they leading it out of Seattle or the west coast and just like mm -hmm. distributing or are there local chapters doing that as well Okay. Yeah, they're just streaming out of Seattle right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's been so they're trying to bring in more teachers because it's very much like a white space right now, as it's seen, which is not actually reflective of like how it is in each city. It just happens to be who's in Seattle and who, you know, like what just what's going on. So it's unfortunate, but um, we've been all doing the necessary work like so many people are doing right now with facing how to address this and how to be better and um yeah just ways that even dance church has been benefiting from white culture all along so it's um yeah it's it's been interesting but it's still a space that's like um exactly what it was like created to be and it's truly for all people it's um like a full body experience and that like it gets you into like the nooks and crannies of yourself and of your body in such a cathartic way and like I, I can't imagine not having it in my life just like yoga just and just like um yeah now that it's like now it's in my life I can't like not have it anymore so there's such a synergy too with dance and with yoga and um mm -hmm. you know a lot of people come here because because they're seeking something they had in high school or college that's like it, but they're probably like me, they've become too rigid or <laughs> have too many inhibitions to like full on go into dance mode. Um, mm -hmm. And while I'll say that, and like, I'm, I'm still working through that one, one exercise we did in college that if, you know, if you haven't tried out dance church yet, or you're a little nervous, I highly recommend. And uh, one of my last finals of like sophomore year in college, we had to choreograph a piece that was completely, uh, the impetus was from one body part. And so mm -hmm. the whole piece had the lead from that body part. So mine was the head and everything has to be um, initiated from the head. And mm -hmm. so something that I've been thinking a lot about is like, um, you know, sitting with, you know, whether it's your yoga practice or meditation and feeling, especially in this tumultuous time, where are you feeling the pain or where are you feeling the anxiety? And maybe just setting a 10 minute timer and trying to move with that space, initiating the movement. Um, you know, we're going to do a, a book club in the fall around my grandmother's hands and just racial trauma to speak to some of what you shared. And, you know, we've got to, we've got to get in our bodies and we've got to get to the place that's hurting to move through the change. I think even if it's not like an official dance step or, you know, anything, if you just roll around on the floor for 10 minutes, but you move from that center, that to me is dance, you know, to just be mm -hmm. 
in connection with your body without a formality to it. Um, I think that's inviting this whole concept of lusia, of grace, of, of beauty. It may not look graceful and beautiful, but it's merging these energies to help us move through the suffering, move through the difficulty. Um, yeah. yeah. If, you know, if you can do it in community, I mean, that, that's, that's a hard thing. I don't even know if I can touch on it right now. Cause it's I know, you're right. hard, but you know, eventually, eventually this isn't forever. And eventually I do think if we do the work now, if we really take the time to be with ourselves, cause that's what the universe is forcing us to do. That when we come back into community, we can be better at that, mm -hmm. you know, and it will be that much more powerful. So yes. um, yeah. Yeah. I think this time is helpful because it is, reminding us and helping us appreciate like how important community is and I mean that might not be true for everyone I don't want to like make that disclaimer but it's at least that's been that for me it's like wow community is everything and like there's um so many different versions of community but just I feel like the benefits of whatever you do by yourself and that work is important and it's also can be maximized within a like a group of people who are also on this same quest and seeking, you know, like, cause ultimately we're all like going through something and, and trying to move through it and trying to be better as we come out on the other side. And like that support is, is essential. You, you know, we can't do it alone. We weren't meant to do it alone. And yoga shows us that and dance is the same way. Um, so yeah, it's extremely tough not to be with people. And that's, people are fighting with it for sure. I mean, it's like, there's rules that we, um, we're like, but we're making an exception because we need to see each other. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's hard. No doubt. It sucks. <laughs> well, I think this is a really good topic though. Of like, it sucks. And we said before we hit record, you know, like mm -hmm. it's really just exposing that I think we always think we have control we always think we have control. We always think we've got it figured out and we don't. And I think these practices of mindful movement, of yoga, of dance are ways to not only release your frustration, but to bridge, to bridge, to bridge the challenge, mm -hmm. to invite celebration. Um, mm -hmm. God, one of my favorite movies is Footloose. And one of the reasons is because like he, uh, what's his fucking name, Ren, at the very end of the movie as he's like making his case for their prom, <laughs> he quotes the Bible and he, you know, he says, and they danced and he talks about how they, they danced as like a celebration. And mm -hmm. I think too, in a time that feels so um, oppressive in a way, or it feels so limiting maybe is the better word, to dance is also a revolution. And I, I think um, to dance and to like embrace all the things and to use it as a catalyst for change is a revolution. So I think whether you know it or not, you embody that to me. And, um, and I so appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think you're so, you hit the nail on the head. It's like, it, do, it doesn't have to be like, dance is like you're tapping into your own life experiences from a very deep place and you know, facing personal demons, but it's on the other side of that. It's like fantasy and um, it's transportive and it can take you to, a, you know, like a space that's not your reality. And that's okay. Like I've, I've, I'm, you know, this, like I'm a Gemini. I'm not just like, well, this is the way it is. It's like, I can always see multiple realities and dance allows me to live that out in like a real way for me where it's like, you can consider you can you know dance is like concepts and and it allows you to tap into other cultures and just like access things that you can't especially as we're all kind of like in this trapped stuck place like you can envision other futures other realities through dance and through music and through movement so and it's healing in that way too and like in more of the positive positive way because yeah, it also reminds me not to take myself so seriously, which is like a big deal for me. Like, cause I can get serious, but it's like when you're dancing, it's also just like really fun. It's 
like it might not be fun for everybody but it's fun like it's it's joy it's freedom it's like nothing but positive things even if I'm moving through dark you know dark spaces in myself but yeah I love it so we can you can find Becca at Practice Indy. You can find her at mm -hmm. local Pilates uh, Epicness um, Era Pilates. You can find her. So you're not teaching dance church right now, but in the future, yeah. right? We'll yeah. find you back at dance church. Is there anywhere else we can find you or uh, ways we can follow you and, and learn with you? Mm, um. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, that's really, I mean, that's all I'm, on, I'm still on Instagram, but that's a scary place right now. So <laughs> I don't want to give you guys places to find me because I'm <laughs> trying to stay off the grid, but it's hard. Um, yeah, it's just such a tricky time with social media. That's a whole other conversation, but um, I'm on email. <laughs> I'll put that in too, uh, you know, in her, in her spare time, oh, she makes unbelievable photographs and videos. Oh my gosh. Yes. My website Ooh. is embarrassing out, embarrassingly out of date, but I do photography still. Can I oh, link sure. Megan's video of the November skies video? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm also into the dance film industry. <laughs> I'm an amateur, <laughs> but it's really time. fun. Yeah. It kind of blends those two sides of myself. I love it. Yeah. Have no future career in it, but it brings me a lot of joy. <laughs> I mean, you might, you know, it's just, just, this is a sitting duck year. Who knows? Maybe yeah. year you explode as a dense, a mm -hmm. dense videographer. Yeah. We can just link to, um, like dance church go with, um, dance church. Dot go. So I think that's right. Oh my gosh. I'll confirm. But um, if people are curious, it's dance church. This is terrible that I don't know it. No. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Go.dancechurch.com. I lied. I yeah. gave someone the wrong email the other day. I've used the same email. Go.dancechurch.com. Yes. And it streams twice weekly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really. Those are my links, I guess. Cool. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Your thank you for being. Thank you so much for having me. This is like one of my favorite topics is just dance, obviously, and just talking about all these different, yeah, just, and meeting points, like the intersection of where we are right now and how that relates to dance is super interesting to me. So um, being online, you know, and not in community. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you are the best. Thanks, Becca Boo. And um, thanks for listening, y'all. Yeah, thank you.